myself Santosh. I do have around nine years of experience working in IT industry, and currently I'm working as manager in Microsoft. Uh, a very good morning to everyone. Today we'll be starting a demo, trying to understand what is data engineering. Request everyone to be on mute. I'll definitely give you time towards the end to ask your questions. But for the first one hour, please listen to the sessions. Okay, and later we will have the question and answer. To start with, we'll try to understand what is this data engineering. Data engineering. Let's look at as a two words. One is data, and one is engineering. And now our main focus for the next one hour is to understand what is this data engineering. What we will be doing as part of this role. Let's look at the agenda for today. Everyone is saying data engineering, data engineering, data engineering. Let's try to understand what is data engineering, and we will see how the data has grown in the last few years. What has made this technology demand? That's the main question. When everyone is saying data engineering, you need to understand why this technology was introduced, right? So we need to figure out. So we'll talk about the big data, and followed by I'll be giving a. n number of examples in a very layman term to understand what is this role is all about and followed by we'll start with the traditional etl pipelines and cloud etl pipeline so etl is nothing but what we are going to do as part of data engineering i'll be walking you through all this in the upcoming slides okay now you take any recent movie any recent movie anything has become a super hit any movie salar salar okay. animal Animal, okay. Jailer. Jailer, okay. That's all. Annapurni. Annapurni, okay. All fail. Okay. Now imagine whenever a movie is successful, everyone will talk about hero, heroine, directors. This director's uh, idea was really good. This actor, actress, acting was good. Uh, the music was good. Music directors, right? So if you see, I have attached a set of photos, right? you have the heroines photo the actress and you have actor and followed by you have directors now all this people we think that they are the key important people for a movie success right we all talk about them when any movie is successful right we talk about their acting and they we talk about their contribution right now that's what we do but just put a question on yourself are this only people who are actually helping the movie to be successful we talk about them just because they are on the front stage they come they show their face they act they they play they take part in songs or uh, scenes right so we talk about them but you know what no one ever talks about a certain group of people every movie will have this set of people but they will never been showcased on the screen but they play a very important role in a movie success right we all know about this people because they are like front end but we really don't know who is helping us to run this movie right if i want to talk about a movie now this people play a major role in movie success but we don't know no one ever talks about them no one ever talks about them the backstage people it could be a light man it could be a cameraman it could be a audio it could be a scenes it could be a complete setup no one even talks about them but without them without them you can't even shoot a single scene these people are completely responsible for running a movie but we don't talk about them we every time we talk about the people who are acting as a front end like the hero heroines or directors or mu music directors but we never speak about this people but just a thought to you without this people you can never ever shoot a single movie right now let's relate this to our role now the people who are standing here taking care of the complete infrastructure the environment the setup well here we call it as a the backstage people but in our case in the real time when we are working with a data driven technologies we are the people who will never been identified because of the work which we do and who are we data engineers 
Now we are all the data engineers, similar to this backstage people who are helping the all the other role to get them what they need, right? Now let's put them into our technical words now. Building the stage. So if you want to shoot a movie. You have to build a stage first, right? You have to make sure that there is a, a green screen in the back and you have the complete a proof, soundproof or a audio proof. You have everything in place, right? So what I'm doing in order to have a shoot, what are the things that is really important? You need a stage. You need to manage the lights and sound, right? That is really important. And you need to set up the scene, correct? And whenever you're working with a, a very good actress, like let's say Rajini Khan, he will not come for multiple shoots. He will say, you arrange everything. I'll come once. I will shoot only once. You cannot take multiple retakes. When you're working, when you're a director, when you're working with a, a very famous actor, you cannot have multiple shoots, right? You need to have one complete flow. You start the action and you finish it. That is really important when you're working with a a great actor or actress, great. Now I need to set up the complete flow. I need to have a complete smooth shooting. Now all this, if you see in the points, I'm just trying to replicate for a data engineer role. So what data engineers will do? Well, we make sure that the complete setup environment is done for the data movement from one place to other place, right? And the complete setup in terms of lights and sounds, I'll also make sure that I have provide a proper light to the data. So that is where we call it as a data pre-processing as well as the data management. And as I said, once an actor comes in, he takes a shoot and he completes a scene, right? Complete scene will be shooted. And that's nothing but my pipeline. Once you send the data, it has to be passing through the end, right? Now, all this we are relating to a movie. Now let's talk about some use case. I'll never start like, okay, what is data engineer? Okay, let's open a data engineer. Okay, definition, go through it. I'll walk you through multiple examples. You yourself will now understand how this role, role is going to be helpful for us, right? Now, the top data-driven technologies in IT market currently is data analyst, data scientist, business analyst. Now, these are the top skills which is currently in the market. Uh, one minute. We are talking about data engineering. Now, where is data engineering? We have the top three in not any particular order. We have a data analyst, data scientist, business analyst. And you know, people have joined for data engineering. Now, where does data engineering? Well, rightly said, it's a it's, backstage. Uh, but let me tell you one thing. This three roles doesn't even exist if you don't have the root. You're talking about the top three data-driven technologies which is nothing but data analyst, data scientist, and business analyst, which is highly open up in the market. But I'm putting a hint on you. This role doesn't even exist if you don't have the root. And who are the root? It's we who are all the data engineers. And of course, we call ourselves as a, a backstage people. We take a privilege of successful projects. But that's fine. Even if you are not being showcased on the screen, that's fine. Because we are going to give them the complete setup in order to run the show. Now, today, if data analysts, business analysts or data scientists are very happily working, it's all because of we people. We are going to be trained as a data engineers. Very straightforwardly, I'm telling you, if you don't have data engineers in your team, all the other roles will just become a, a dummy card. We can never do anything with that. With that context, let's start talking about a bit of use cases. Let's start talking about use cases. First, we'll talk about growth of data, how the data is keep on increasing and how we can we manage all this data and what made us to get the big problems. Okay, let me talk about first case study. Let me talk about first case study. We have a healthcare. What is healthcare? Basically, we deal with all the patients, hospitals, pharmacies, medicines, okay, and all the scans, reports, everything we take care of the data, correct? Now, what is happening? Let me, we are getting the patient's records. And of course, we have an inpatient, outpatient, we have all the type of patients we get. And apart from that, they, uh, we are tracking their oxygen, or maybe we are tracking their uh, blood samples, we are taking care of their pulse 
okay everything we are tracking in terms of a wearable device and what are the medicines they are taking it could be a clinic a uh, clinical data it could be a pharmaceutical data it could be a, a laboratory test so all this we are getting from different different team right not everything comes under one place right if you want to take a medicine you have to go to a pharmacy right if you want to go with some devices you have to go to a, a device shop if you want to take some test you have to go to a laboratory you cannot do everything at one place but most of the hospitals would have experienced this you would have taken the test when you go and ask them a report you know what they'll tell we will not share you the report directly the report will go to the doctors you go and meet the doctors this is what they say correct so who is going to transfer this data to them there is a system there is a system right so you will never take a, a hard copy of the scan and you will never go through it and you are not the doctor here you are just a patient and you are not going to do anything else but the person who took the scan he is going to share all the reports to the doctor's machine and when you go the doctor will be already will be having everything in handy and they'll start talking to you about what happened now that's a systematic process the same way let's see what is happening here we are getting the patient data we are getting the pharmacy data and all this numbers which you are seeing it's just the number of patients number of pharmacy uh, products that has been purchased number of tests that has happened in labs the number of people who are uh, reporting to clinic now all this is something the data is getting generated and each team will be working under a different module and they are maintaining a separate file formats so one person i mean patients who are working under patient data maybe a receptionist they are taking care of all the patient data they are tracking in the csv file format maybe pharmacy they are taking all the uh, pharmacy details like what tablets or maybe what medicine and they are taking in the xml format so like this they are taking care of all this in a different file formats now if this is a case there is high likely chance that the data can be duplicated one person who has went to clinic would have also registered in the laboratory or maybe would have also been part of the pharmacy there can be some duplications that can happen now what is happening in the current system i'll tell you the solution number 1 says in the current system there is an each person who is sitting next to the line of business let's say patient data pharmacy labs we have a different line of business and we have a each person who is sitting on top of them who is doing the analysis who is doing the analysis now end of the day you need to report this to a government you need to report this to a government or it could you need to report to some hospitals because it's a healthcare you have to go and report it to one of the healthcare department correct now what is happening in the current system all the five people are actually inting to the maybe healthcare now is it a good idea definitely no why why you need all the five people to go and talk to your health department not required now i am trying to have a better solution to this what i am going to do each person going and talking to healthcare every now and then this are the number of patients i received this is a number of pharmacy products has been sold this is a number of tests we have got in the laboratory oh, how can you go and talk to your healthcare like this right all five people going and talking to them at each different timings it's impossible right now i have come up with a solution for this the solution is i have slightly changed the architecture just observe carefully what i am going to do i am trying to combine all the files together i am going to combine all the files together wherever there is a duplicate patients duplicate data i'll try to clean up that and i'll try to organize it well it is coming from a different file formats because we don't have control each one will have their own way of storing the data so i'm taking the complete control of the system and i am storing in a place and top of that we are making use of the analysis just imagine solution 1 five people were talking to the department the healthcare department now only one person is taking care of it now who is taking all this efforts 
combining all the files, organizing the data, making sure that it is uh, in a well formatted, cleaned up, no missing values, uh, no null values, no duplicates. All this I'm maintaining and then I'm sending for analysis. Well, that's a role of a data engineer. Now, who is going to refine the solution? Solution one is an existing solution, where a solution two has been given by your data engineers. Well, morning, morning, why are you talking about healthcare? Didn't you get any, any better example? Well, this is a second example for you. Everyone would have purchased at least one product in Amazon, right? Everyone would have at least purchased one product in Amazon. Now, this is an Amazon portal which you're seeing on the screen. There is one thing which is highlighted. Now, we, are not, we need to understand first is Amazon is not manufacturing any products. Amazon is just a, a warehouse. They have a very huge space. They have a very big area. So they'll get multiple products from multiple uh, vendors and they'll keep it, it in their place. And whoever is ordering, they go and deliver. Okay, your Amazon will never manufacture iPhone. They're taking from Apple. Your Amazon will never manufacture Samsung phone. They're taking from Samsung company. That's what they do. They're, they don't manufacture any products, but they're actually acting like an intermediate person. I don't know whether you have observed it or not. Whenever you buy any product, you'll actually see this. You'll actually see this, this part. You'll be seeing this. For sure, you'd have seen this. Any product you purchase, there will be a, a details about who is going to sell this product, right? Now, this is sold by Apario Retail Private Limited. This is again a, an intermediate retail shop, it could be. So from there, your product will be delivered. Okay, your Amazon is in US. The main office in US. If you order a phone, do you think it will come in US? Definitely no. They have some tie-ups in different, different small, small retail companies. Okay, now I'm going to buy an iPhone 14 which is actually sold by Aperio Retail Private Limited, which is again a small shop. So Amazon will tell, hey, I have a request from this. You take this much commission, you go and deliver this product. And that will be taken care by these people, correct? Now, let's take a Vivo phone now. Let's take a Vivo phone now. So now it is actually sold by Market Toppers. This is another small retail company. Now. Amazon is not coming from US and delivering these products. They're actually organizing small, small retail companies so that the product is delivered to you. Correct? Now, Amazon has a challenge now. What does Amazon has a challenge? Amazon is also taking care of multiple intermediate retail companies, which is called Aperio, which is called Retail EZ, VRP Telemets. So there are so many intermediate retail companies which amazon is taking care of it as i said amazon will never come from us and deliver the products so they have the tie up from each and every small small retail companies now what is the role of amazon very simple which small retail tie up company is making good sales is having good revenues so they actually want the complete analysis of this small, small companies saying that how much of sales you have made, how much of profit you have made. Have you improved over month on month? Every company, okay, take this from me. Every company on this planet, the only aim is to generate revenue. The only, rev the only aim of the company is to generate revenue. You ask KSR? Gen uh, generating revenue. You ask Amazon, their aim will be generate revenue. You ask any bank, their aim will be to generate revenue. So any company you take on this planet, the only aim is to go and generate revenue. So Amazon is also going to strive for it. So we have an intermediate retail company. They're going to track it. They're going to track it. How they are going to track it? Okay. Have we collected the 895 transaction details, 75 product details, 1,420 maybe customer details. So they're actually giving the complete storage that is a data stored in the file formats. Now, imagine this is Amazon CEO. In the real time, do you think each person is taking care of the specific retail company will do the analysis 
and do you think they will go and talk to amazon ceo do you think amazon ceo we will get five appointments for them now this is a bad idea of doing it a better solution which i would give is why you want to go and do an analysis with a file by file why can't i do with a better way what is a better way combine all the files together because everyone is making sales combine all the sales see every file will have a product maybe every file will have a sales every file will have a customer so why you want to divide every file individually do five people analysis not required my solution will be combine all the files together store it in a place remove all the duplicate products customers clean up the complete data then you do the analysis and then you go and talk to your ceo it's a better solution compared to the previous one it's a better solution okay i did not understand healthcare i did not understand amazon not a problem i'll give you another use case and this use case i will not take any other example i will tell you the own problem that we are facing in our house okay the problem that we are facing in ksr a very openly i am discussing what is a problem that we are facing in ksr imagine we are actually launching a new course let's not keep it as a data engineering let's keep it as any other course now we are launching a data engineering i mean any xyz course the first thing what we do is we go and uh, tell about what is this course who can go for this course who is the right person who can learn this what is a job market trend everything we do right now listen to this use case very carefully this will clear you the doubt of complete data engineering role now once we give all the information we go and send it to our students so some students are very much active on facebook some students are very active on whatsapp telegram linkedin or instagram so what we do we focus on all the five social media platform we send messages you would have also got the message about today's demo right you would have got in whatsapp some would have seen in the instagram some would have seen in the whatsapp and facebook right now irrespective of which social media you are using you would have got the information and that's why you are sitting in this class today i have a problem now the problem is ksr has hired five people to take care of each one social media platform in the first no if you see the first value we have got 49 students who have got from facebook we have got 81 students who have attended this demo from telegram 141 from whatsapp 204 from linkedin 98 from instagram okay all good so far so good now there is one problem can can hacker each person we call them as a telecaller person is taking care of one one social media platform now what you do is you go and send a text in instagram to ksa data vision saying that i am actually looking for a course you are actually sending a message in the instagram i am looking for a course and we all human beings lack patience we don't have patience at all including you including me we don't have patience at all the generation the current generation people have lost the patience right so what you do you wait for 2 minutes you will never get any response from instagram but you need to know about this course immediately you know what you will do immediately you will go and ask in whatsapp as well you have already asked in instagram which we have not responded yet okay instagram basically will not always keep online right whatsapp okay yes so you asked us the question about the course in the instagram which you did not get any response for 2 minutes just 2 minutes and you people have lost patience and you went to a whatsapp and again you asked the same question and now another person is actually talking to you and he is giving all the details about your course this course is at uh, it's starting on january 4th it's starting at 8 o'clock you can attend the first five free classes all the details he is giving okay now you have already got all the information we already got all the information in whatsapp immediately what happens the person who missed your messages in the instagram okay there is another person 
uh, we have multiple people in ksr who's taking care of calls now the other person you know what he did he missed your message he is giving you a call back now when you called he did not pick now he is giving you a call back like this if you are getting a repetitive calls for the same information you will be frustrated i wanted information i have already got it why you people are calling that means you people are not interconnecting between yourself you people are not speaking to each other you could have communicated right this person and this person you would have communicated hey i got i got a call from this xyz person you don't call him you could have communicated right why are you eating my head that will be your thinking for same information how many people will call you from our team this is where we will call it as a over marketing we got to over marketing we keep on calling to the people again and again now this type of things will never work in the real time because you people will be frustrated why frustrated i already got the information from one person why are you again calling me back and by chance you would have liked a insta a linkedin post or a telegram you may even get four calls all the four people from ksa will start calling you sir have you attended the demo what is the feedback or what you want to say all people will call you again and again does it sound odd now we have come across a solution to our team itself forget about all the other companies in our own company we have built a, a data engineering project what is a data engineering project very simple first the management decided you collect all the information all the lead information put it into one system put it into one system in that let's go and see how many of them have asked us the details from facebook or instagram see nowadays everyone using a common email id you have a gmail id with the same gmail id you would have created your facebook account you would have created your linkedin account you would have created your uh, instagram account correct so with that i will see how many times this guy has come and checked us so the person name called abc have requested the details on the instagram on the linkedin as well as on the facebook so is it required to call him three times you call him sir you have checked from the linkedin post this is a call for you you have checked the details on instagram this is a call for you is it a right way to call three times the person who is interested to join the course also will block the number and move away that will happen now our team has to take care of this very effectively they'll put all the data into one bucket they'll start removing the duplicates they'll start removing the unwanted i mean uh, the wrong numbers or wrong email ids invalid numbers invalid user ids everything they will remove and then we are going to have a, a complete analysis how many people have joined how many people have joined from linkedin how many have joined from facebook that analysis i can do rather than five people going and talking to ksr ceo it's not a good idea you know how busy the ceo is right you cannot ask all the telecallers to go and talk to our ceo instead we are going to organize it to one system and one analysis and one person will go and talk to ceo in all the three use cases which i have talked the very fundamental rule that we have followed is the data is scattered across different systems and we as a data engineers who are trying to bring all in one place organize it clean it transform it finally send it to the analysis system well you people are data engineers who are going to do this task the same explanation what i've given you for all the three use cases you will be doing in the real time now in real time what happens data will be coming from web data will be coming from excel data will be coming from the database and it will be scattered across different systems you can't even guess how many people we have in our system so first we need to collect everything and then on top of that we need to do all the data cleaning transformations well that is what as a data engineer we are doing it okay you know with all these three examples understanding the core concept of what you're going to do let's speak about one layer up 
why you need this data engineering can't we track of maybe a small small files well there is a problem we are into a world where completely the systems are been packed with applications you just open your phone you will find minimum 20 25 applications in your smartphone and everyone every app needs a account without account you cannot do anything right so if you see 3.5 million applications are there in your android how many people are using it now how can i manage the data the world population itself has reached to 8 billion right by 2022 and we have see the applications that is happening it is also in millions so billions and millions maybe it's it's a still a big scale but see the number of applications that you have when this type of applications we have in the system obviously people will start storing their information in the app the usage right so i cannot keep on duplicating the data it's a high time for me to organize it well let me give you another fact why data engineering is demand in the last few years until 2001 or 2 things were good but if you see all these applications 2004 5 6 7 is where all these applications came into picture right so instagram is actually just 13 years old just 13 years old your instagram is just 13 years old it was launched in 2010 and the one which you are using for your transactions google pay for it's just 3 4 years old or maybe if i take about google pay it's 18 18 to 25 5 years old we are also going to uh, i mean you are also seeing lot of videos in youtube right so first ever video was published in 2005 do you all know what was the first video that was published in youtube the first ever video that was published in youtube 2005 yes no how much time you are spending on uh youtube so do you know what was the first video that was published in youtube no no me at the zoo it was actually uploaded in youtube on april 23 2005 this was a first ever youtube video that was published 18 years ago see the quality see the quality of the video 300 million views in the last 18 years this was a first ever video that was uploaded in which year 2005 if i want to go back and rewind 2005 is nothing maybe you would have been in your 8th standard or 9th standard Your eighth standard, ninth standard, the first YouTube video was published, right? Now all these applications are becoming more and more. Now it's hardly becoming very difficult for me to an manage the complete data. How many subscribers? How many videos? How many people are watching the videos? Correct? Now all this becomes a, just a number for you, but for them, it's a complete analysis. And if you can see. 2.37 billion users 1.5 billion users so many billion users are using so how can we manage this data right so just to give you some stats these are the things that is happening every minute users are watching 41 lakh videos every minute every minute let's say you count 60 seconds You would have the users would have watched forty one lakh videos every minute. Forty six k images has been uploaded to Instagram. When people are utilizing these applications, there is a, always a a big headache for the companies to manage this data. How can I manage this data now? How can I make a a seamless process? Every second, Google is having forty thousand search. how come they give can they give the answers in a very limited time maybe if it's in india if it's a night us is still morning if if it's a night in us it's still morning in india so the google utilization is skills keep on increasing only so how will how are they managing the workload we are only at the usage layer but we never ever research about what is happening in the back end 
that's why i started the class with a, a movie right we all know what is happening on the movie screen but we never ever know what is happening in the back end now that's the biggest challenge that we have with respect to this data now let's talk about why you people have started using more data the one thing which you need to remember is nowadays everyone is having access to internet everyone is having access to internet right without internet you can't even cross a day we are into that stage now and of course internet is always linked with your smartphone internet is always linked with your smartphone correct so smartphone and internet two things which you have to always keep it in your hand correct now um the time is let's say 9 o'clock okay 9 o'clock am ist and the date is 4th jan until you come back to the next class which is tomorrow 8 o'clock okay 5th jan tomorrow you have the second class and we started 8 o'clock we still have 23 hours left we still have 23 hours left until you come to the next class if i ask you to stop using your internet and smartphone for one day is it possible just one day just one day i want you to be without using your smartphone you should never touch you keep it in other room you stay without your phone for one day 23 hours it's a open challenge anyone wants to give a try possible possible not possible one day just one day not possible one day without using internet and phone is it possible no it has become like your one of your body part you can never live without that body part it has become like that right very hard life that we are having without a smartphone and internet it is impossible to live we have come to that stage now we have come to that stage one hour if you be without phone itself it's a very uh, i mean achievement it's very hard and in this generation world where we have internet we have smartphones we have sensors we have the devices smart devices and we have the iot internet of things and finally you need not be educated to use your phone you need not be graduated to use a phone you give it to a 3 year old kid they will use better than you they will use better than you they know what to press what need not to press they will know it better you need not be an educated person to use a smartphone all this all this is trying to improve your data 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 and finally we have come to a stage where it's no way called a data now we always call it as a big data we always call it as a big data the term data now has changed a lot now everyone will call it as a big data why big data just go and see the background how much of data that is getting generated you may be thinking for the last 15 minutes i'm speaking for the last 15 minutes my audio is getting recorded my video is getting recorded my screen is getting recorded my screen sharing is getting recorded and i would have almost generated 1 gb of data and you people are you think you are watching it quietly without internet you also connected to your wifi you also connected to your mobile data and you are also utilizing your internet without internet do you think you can attend my class i'm in bangalore you were in somewhere in some part of the world you are in us uk canada germany mexico australia somewhere you are in the different part of the world and you are still able to listen to my class without even having a single minute lag how is it possible it's the jane internet when we have all this flexibilities is it really 
required to stop all this? Definitely not possible, right? Now, let me tell you one thing. Let me tell you one thing. If you are wondering, have I taken a right decision of learning data engineering? One day, data engineering will also go down. I'll tell you when will the day come? When will the day come? Okay. I'll tell you and you tell me whether it's possible or not possible. The demand for data driven technologies will one day definitely will fall down. When is that day? The day we stop using internet, smartphones, go back to the traditional systems, sending a postal card, going and meeting your friends in house. Right. Rather than sending the invitation to your WhatsApp, you go to their house, share the invitation, start sending your post. Right. And stop using all the smartphone sensors, smart devices. And when the number of people who are working, all people should all should be scaled with data engineering. If these two things happen, the demand for data will definitely go down. Now you tell me, is it going to happen practically in our life? Stop using mm. all the systems, go back to the old version, older version, how your grandparents, parents were living, go back to the traditional world, stop using data, right? And all the people who are working in IT will have a knowledge of data. If this happens, the demand for data will obviously go down. You tell me, is it going to happen? Yeah, can I put in another way, like uh, because of some data science model, that model can be automate of uh, ETL process. Uh, sorry, what is it? Yeah, can I put in other way like that because of any data science model, uh, can we uh, automate uh, this data engineering process work like uh, ETL process? So that's what we are going to do. We have a problem now. The data is coming in a very uh, like wide range. It is coming from different systems. Now, as a data engineer, we need to solve this problem. That's what we are going to do. And that's what we are speaking about the data, how data has been improving. And nowadays, forget about data. We call it as a big D. We call it as a big data. So big data is something which we are now, we have to handle this problem. How are we going to handle this problem? Well, I, why are you worrying? We're all data engineers who are going to solve this problem. So that means we'll be working in the process of doing the automation of things. Yes. We are the people who are going to organize it. How the data is coming, we'll make sure that we will go and organize it, clean it, automate the pipelines. Now, with this data, is it really required to go and maintain it? Can we ignore it? Can we ignore it? Today morning, um, we have got leads, right? Let's say we have got leads. Instagram, let's say we have got 35. And uh, Facebook, we got 12. And you people would have seen from WhatsApp, you people like or maybe let's say 87 people have seen the message. Telegram, we got around 14. And um, Let's say LinkedIn. LinkedIn, we have got only one. Okay, this is a number of leads. I told Mayesh, Mayesh, just one person from LinkedIn. Leave it now. Ignore him. You focus on the others. You send the most messages to WhatsApp. You, you focus on this. This one, you can leave it. What is that one person? Whether he joins or doesn't, know, what is the problem with you? You ignore it. Now tell me, can I do this? Can I do this? Can I ignore that one person? No, we cannot ignore. Why? Just one person, right? What is going to happen? You so have 87 people from WhatsApp, but you just one person, right? Leave, ignore it. What is there? So if you think about it, you can uh, telegram, Facebook also. Let me tell you what happened. We need that to look into success uh, ratio. How many are uh, joining to classes through which meeting? Right. So let me tell you one thing. This one person, he was not a normal person. He was actually from a corporate. So if would have managed this person from his corporate organization, I would have got 40 plus. That would have happened if I would have taken care of him. If I would have ignored, I'm not ignoring only him. The 
leads which is coming from him i would have ignored we really didn't know we we thought okay one person okay we will fin- we will fin- i mean we will drop off but if i would have done this then as an organization we are failing you know why that one person would have been a corporate person who's working in one of the company like ceo or cto he would have got 60 or 40 people from his team never ever ignore a single data point every single data point is going to be a fuel for you to run your business i keep saying this as an example data will be always important data will be always important and my favorite example i'll tell you okay uh, if you are from a, a farmer or an agriculture family you will know it better imagine you are uh, having a lunch or dinner with a farmer okay by chance you just waste one rice on your plate what is the consequence what is the consequence just one rice while eating food with them just rice one rice you waste on the plate what is the consequence you know the value of the food they they can waste they will scold you like anything they'll scold you like anything they'll say there are so many people without this food and you are getting it everything you know how much of efforts we do we put this to grow it so many things they'll say right well they are focused on their life we are focused on our life for a data engineer for any data driven technology every single point is like a, a grain of rice that is very important in like a farmer i can never ever ignore a single data point not even a single data point i can ignore because that one data point can change the complete scope of your analysis so for me data is the most important key just like a farmer is worried about a one small grain i am worried about a very small data both are same he is looking for his professional i am looking for my profession for him maybe a very single grain could be a very important for him for me yes very single data point could be very important for me and that's the profession for us right very simple more data more analysis more results more profit that's a key important stuff for every project any project you take in this world their only focus will always be generating profit and we will get to know who is liking who is not liking when you have lot of data you can figure out let's say for example we have sold one product every product will have rating okay we see the rating and only then we buy why because we want to see the customer likes and dislikes the feedback actually plays a very important role for even for your product you go and buy any one product in amazon the first thing you do is you always go and see the reviews right so those are all actually adding up more toppings on your business so at any point of time we can never ignore not even a single data point by chance you would have missed this a single lead from linkedin and linkedin is known to be one of the professional site for your organizations by chance if you miss it you're actually losing 40 plus remember that right with all this last give I, i'm giving a last to try to make you understand what is data engineering okay just carefully observe this is a photo taken from my terrace couple of months back couple of months back this is a photo that is taken from my terrace this is a road i'm just next staying to the road it was completely raining heavily and the road has been flooded flooded you can see that vehicles is actually like shrink with water like lot of things have happened you can see how uh, mess up the area is very simple couple of months back there was a heavy rain in bangalore what happened rain water never found a place to settle it all spread across the streets and in fact it started entering the houses as well your entire normal life is affected very simple very simple explanation i'm giving you assume that this happened now tell me what could be the main cause to have a flooded place like this recently also two weeks or three weeks back we had a flood in most of the uh, southern part of your tamil nadu right so a lot of people have lost their home waters have entered into home the what is the main reason you know very simple they have not made a proper rain water harvesting no proper planning and they were ne- never been prepared for the situation after all i am talking about 
as simple rain and you are not able to able to tackle this okay forget about this example forget about this example let me show you another example let me explain you another example imagine all of a sudden all your relatives are coming to your home imagine all of a sudden so many relatives are coming to your home of course uh, your house which is a 40 cross 30 square feet okay and it has 3 bhk and it is a, a decent house okay it is a decent house imagine all of us actually you call them one family you call them for lunch for a get together one family you call them for dinner one family you call them for breakfast let's say you wanted to meet all of them but you know what happened you call them and all came at the same time and the number of relatives were 40 your home can accommodate maximum of 10 people and what if all 40 people come together what if all 40 people come together the first thing is they will never find a place to settle and you have never been prepared you have never been prepared to handle this 40 people right so it's like a shortage will be there and it will be very congested you know if 40 people can stay in the 1200 square feet of house you should be knowing how difficult it is right everyone will be packed now the problem actually is it was a very congested and a food shortage but the actual reason is you have not been prepared you did not do proper planning. You did not do proper arrangements. Maybe you should have taken one extra house from your neighbors or one rented house since because everyone is coming for a function. So you should have at least done some arrangements. You have not been doing. You have not been handled to. You have not been prepared to handle the situation. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. The current data that is coming from the different system of this world is 40 gigabytes. Okay, 40 gigabytes. Gigabytes is nothing but 10 to the power of 21. 10 to the power of 21. That means 40 followed by 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 21 zeros. After all, 40 people you cannot manage in your house, the world is having 40 gigabytes of data. How are you going to handle it? How are you going to handle it? 40 people coming to your house unexpectedly. You people are not able to provide them a proper facilities. The world is filled with 40 gigabytes by 2022. How are you going to handle this? How are you going to handle this? Well, that's where now we are facing the problem. And the problem is, what if data also flows like this suddenly into your system? Just like your relatives are coming to your house. Just like your uh, rain suddenly drains and the floods are happening. Now imagine what if data is also flowing into your system. All of a sudden, if 1,000 people call to our team, do you think our KSR team can manage it? All of a sudden, if 1 lakh people are booking a Tatkal ticket at exactly 11 o'clock, do you think the IRCTC website can hold the server? That's the current problem. Just like you cannot manage a 40 people, we are also struggling to manage the company data. What if the data is also flowing from different systems? How are you going to manage it? Do you have the capacity to handle, first of all? Can your system process? For example, your Zoom meeting supports only 500 people. What if suddenly more than five, 250 people join? What you will do? You have to take another license. You have to extend your license, right? All these are the big problem and the big problem. Well, all in all, I'm going to stop this session with the problem. And how are you going to fix this? Well, we are going to fix it with the help of data engineer. I've set up the context in a very layman explanation, like why data engineering? why we re really required in the next class we will focus on the technical part what is data engineering how are we going to solve this problem when data suddenly comes from different systems how are we going to manage it now that will be the agenda for tomorrow today i have given you a three use cases 
I have talked about all the three use cases. What is the current problem? And I've given a couple of layman explanation as well. What if suddenly your relatives come? What if suddenly rains? You have not been prepared to handle this situation. Just related how the data also comes into your system suddenly. How are you going to manage it? For all in all, the only solution is data engineers. Data engineers will be helping us to manage the data, and they will help us to completely manage your business. Very much privileged to tell this. If there is no data engineers, you can never have any of the other role in the market. Okay, so we'll stop here. We'll continue tomorrow at eight o'clock.